This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. If you would like to follow along with this lesson, navigate to your working files. Lesson 4, Reflection. In this chapter, we'll be discussing clone layers and reflections. For this lesson, I've chose to use the timeline instead of the layers pane. In a motion graphics project, sometimes it's necessary to reuse a complex layer in other parts of the project multiple times. Although you can duplicate or cut and paste any layer, if you update the original, none of the changes you make are applied to the copies. Keeping track of these changes can become a tedious and difficult management task. If you find yourself applying the same filters and masks to more than one copy of a layer, you should take advantage of the Make Clone Layer command. Making clone layers has the additional benefit of improving project playback and rendering performance. You can make clone layers out of images, video clips, groups, particle systems, text, shapes, and replicators. The clone layer inherits the following properties from its source layer, rotation, scale, opacity, blend mode, and drop shadow. Adjustments made to any of these properties of the source layer after the clone layer creation do not propagate to the clone layers. The clone layers only inherit changes made to filters and masks of the source layer. Behaviors also do not propagate to clone layers unless the behavior affects the filter or the mask. Clone layers can be manipulated in the canvas and timeline in exactly the same way as the source layer. Let's take a look. One main reason to use a clone layer is to reflect a layer. Select the clone layer on the canvas, then press the letter K on the keyboard, or choose Object Make Clone Layer. A clone layer is created and put right on top of the original layer, as we can see here in the timeline. The clone layer is now selected, and we can adjust it. With the Transform tool, click on the middle top handle and drag down. This will scale the layer negatively on the Y axis to create a reflection. In a later chapter, we'll talk about masks, which can increase the realism of this reflection. For now, we'll use a filter. From the Filters pop-up, choose Blur, Gaussian Blur. In the Inspector, make sure the Filters tab is selected and turn up the amount. This gives the look of refraction against a shiny surface. If we choose the Clone Layer Group in the timeline, we can move the entire group the original layer and the clone layer. We can also apply filters, effects, behaviors, or make a particle system from this group. The important thing about clone layers is if we select the original layer and apply a filter, let's say color correction, colorize, it is automatically affecting the clone layer as well. If we remap white, it remaps the white in the clone layer at the same time. Also, any masks applied to the original layer are propagated to the clone layer. Again, masks will be covered in a later chapter. For now, let's hide the clone layer group in the timeline by unchecking the box to the left of clone layer group. Click the disclosure triangle next to clone layer group to hide all the layers inside of the clone layer group. Turn on the reflection group. Here we have two squares and text making up the reflection group. Right now, this is a 2D group. We can see this indicated by the two squares next to reflection group. Reflections can only be used on a 3D layer. We can make a group a 3D layer by clicking the button off to the right. As we can see, the squares have changed to a perspective view. The button also has changed to a perspective view. Clicking it again returns to a 2D group. For now, keep it as a 3D group. We have a camera object in our project and we have camera controls in the upper right hand corner of our canvas. If you are not seeing the camera controls, click view, and make sure 3D overlays is turned on. If we adjust the orbit of the camera, we can see how the layers are laid out in the group. Double click any of the controls to return the camera to its default view. We can see the back wall as a clone layer of the floor indicated by its icon on the left. Select the back wall and the floor, in the inspector, choose Properties and turn on Reflections. We can now see it's reflecting the text reflection on both the back wall and the floor. Orbit the camera and notice the reflection moves. We are only seeing the reflection twice. 
we are seeing the word, it reflecting on the floor, and it reflecting on the back wall. If we select project in the layers pane or the timeline, then choose inspector properties, we can see how many times the reflections will bounce back and forth. We have a maximum of eight reflections, which can be achieved by dragging up on the number to the right. If we position our camera properly, we'll be able to see those eight reflections. Keep in mind this will slow down the rendering process. For now, keep it set to two. Select the back wall layer, return to Inspector, Properties, and double click the word Reflection. We have a few options when reflecting layers. We can choose how much is being reflected, the blur amount, and the blend mode. If you choose Add, it reflects as if it was a mirror. If you choose Overlay, it reflects as if it was a piece of glass.